This is a fan production, done for entertainment purposes only. No attempt has been made to infringe or supersede any existing copyright in relation to Doctor Who, which remains the property of the British Broadcasting Corporation. This feature is made on a strict, non-profit-making basis. You know, I don't think I could ever tire of that view. Space is just stupidly beautiful. I know someone else which is beautiful. You're so cheesy sometimes. Oh, come on. A minute. You love it. Maybe. Did you hear about the boarding crew today? Of course. Only because I was worried about you. Me? Nah. You're never getting rid of me that easily. Yeah, but it's a bit weird, right? I mean, they just vanished. I'm sure there was a simple explanation. No clear what the explanation is, but there you go. I call aliens. Of course you do. Well, what else could it be? Rumour has it, statues. Statues? What would a statue do? Pick you up and make you disappear. You've been reading comics again. Says the girl, always blaming anything weird that happens on the station on aliens. Oh, my pen's run out. Aliens? My toilet's broken. Aliens! Again? The light units have been on the blink all day in the office too. Scared? I'll protect you. Oh, a knight in shining armour. I reckon I could pull that look off. <laughs> Weirdly sexy. Something must be playing up in that generator room. Come on, it's only down the hall. And what would you know about how a generator works? <sighs> Not a lot, but there is bound to be someone in there. Or we just do the usual trick of turning everything off and on again. Oh, because that trick worked so well on my sonic shower. Hey, you got a free tanning session. For a week. And you are the most beautiful tanned girl on station 2964. Come on. Let's go get our tech on. Please never say that again. Sorry, noted. Not too sure about this. We aren't even supposed to be down here. Will you quit worrying? Everyone too distracted worrying about the missing crew members to be bothered about two lesbians messing around down here. What if we get caught? Power room, see? It's empty. Damn, this room feels creepy. I wonder where everyone's gone. Here, take my hand if you're scared, Astra. I know how sensitive you can get. Astra? Not a great time to be playing tricks, sweetie. Astra? Anyone? Oh, the lights are messing around. We were wondering what the issue was. Who puts a stone angel in a generator room? No, wait. Are you the thing that took the boarding team? Why am I asking you questions? You're literally made of stone. Astra, I'm starting to worry now. Seriously, this isn't funny. Hang on. Did you just... So not Singapore. You do remember you're supposed to be taking me there, don't you? Don't worry, Charlie. I've not forgotten. But this place, it's not just a space station. It's THE space station. The first official settlement of humans outside of the Milky Way. A mashup of different people thrown together to create its own civilization off Earth. So a sort of floating town? Exactly! Like a floating city. Homes, shops, parks, schools. Everything people needed. It's a time traveler's mystery, though. How so? It disappeared, and no one knows why. And that's the real reason we're going. You do love to sniff out the mystery. 
Well, there's that, and I thought you'd be interested in the future of your race. Not since the last time you showed me, no. Oh, but that was an adventure. Oh yes, Cybermen! Please let's meet them again. Welcome to a life of travelling with me. Living on the edge, daily. Join the Doctor and his companion, Charlotte Pollard. Is this what I get for overshooting Singapore? Doctor! You were out by eight years! Eight years! I'm seriously starting to think you can't even fly this TARDIS. It's definitely not true, see? Space Station 2964. Should I clap? You're beginning to remind me of another companion I once had. She always moaned about her... Not, not... getting to Heathrow, yes. Doctor, you've told me that one already. Starting to think I need to keep a list. Come on, let's explore. I once ran a race with Roger Bannister. Oh, how you do enjoy name dropping, Doctor. I once played chess with Lewis Carroll. But he was very good at chess, Charlie. I'm sure he was. We're a busy space station. This seems rather empty. Well, who are they? I'm just scanning them for ID, Commander. I've never seen them before. I think I'd remember the blonde. Probably just civilians. Even the civilians know that's a restricted area. That's true. I'll just keep an eye on the lights. Thank you, Lex. Lieutenant, any luck on ID? No, Commander. The scan has shown no microchips in either of them. Well, that can't be right. Everyone's tagged at birth. Ben, take your team down and lead them out to the safe quarters. Then we'll find out who they are and how they got here. On it, Commander. Drake, Lex, with me. Try and stay out of the shadows. Oh, well, I'll come back. Don't you worry about that, baby doll. I'll keep in contact and update you as much as I can. Look after yourself, darling. Ah, this is more like it. This must be the central hub. And yet there's no one here. It looks like these shops haven't been open in months. Ooh, vending machine. Drum a bell? I've not seen one of those in years. Now, do I have any money on me? I'm not sure I like the feeling of this place, Doctor. You and me both, Johnny. Aha. That should work. It feels unwelcoming. Yes. Like you've just walked in a dead person's home moments after the body's been moved. Oh, Doctor, do you have to be quite so ominous? It's true, though. Well, yes. Yes. Seriously, Charlie, you need to try this. Um, Doctor? I don't know who you are, but this is a restricted sector. Ah, people. Not quite the welcome I was expecting, but... Oh. What's with the guns? I paid for the chocolate, honestly. Pointing guns in our faces is hardly necessary. Who are you? And how did you get here? Well, I'm the Doctor and this is my friend... Charlotte Pollard. Charlie to my friends. Well, Charlie to my friends, we aren't here for niceties. You are unregistered civilians in a restricted zone. Do you know how dangerous it is here? Get out of this complex, now! Right. Firstly, why exactly are we moving? Secondly, I think you'll find us far more accommodating if you stop pointing guns at us. Move! All right! No need to shove! Are all humans in the future this rude? They're just following the orders, Charlie. Typical army. Best do as we're told. Chocolate? What zone are we taking them to, Fan? Red. The nearest one. And why exactly was that last sector restricted? The section you were in has been invaded. Invaded? Try not to sound too excited, Doctor. By whom, exactly? By angels. Stone angels? Well, they look like stone, but they're definitely not. Uh, well, you see, slowly they've been taking over the station, you know, taking the people we care about. Oh no. Charlie, this isn't good. Ah, the red zone, I presume. We scanned them, Drake. I refuse to believe they have no ID. ID? Nothing on the mail, sir. And the female? Oh, uh, yeah, of course. Sorry. Um, please, stay still, Miss Pollard. Miss Pollard? That's very formal. Doctor, why are these people hiding from angels? Not now, Charlie. No chip on Charlie either, sir. We have no chips because we are visitors. Sightseers. 
visitors. No one ever visits Station 2964. That shouldn't be happening here. This is a designated safe zone. Oh no. When did that statue get here? He wasn't there a moment no. ago. Don't approach it. Why not? He's right. Charlie, listen to me. Everyone, back away towards the door now. Do not take your eyes off that angel. Just keep backing away. Doctor? Doctor? Stop pushing, stop panicking. You're making this worse. Charlie? Locked. How they found us, I'll never know. That door should hold them back for now. They always work their way out eventually. Plus, it's not like we've got many places to hide anymore, is it? Wait a moment. Locked? Not everyone's out. There's still people in there. Who's to say those creatures didn't take them? Lex, I need the section cornered off. Yes, sir. Charlie. Where's Charlie? Doctor? Doctor, I'm on the other side of the door. The man who scanned us and two others are with me. Those statues are still here, too. Camera, camera, camera. You, camera, do you have monitors in that compartment? Uh, yes, here, sir. I'm the doctor, remember, just, just the doctor. And I'm here to help. Johnny, listen to me. Don't take your eyes off that statue. I hear you, Doctor. But we can't stand here forever staring. Open the door. We need them out now. It's not safe. It's deadlocked. The door's not budging. Remind me of your name again. Lieutenant Fenn, sir. Fenn. Not a great fan of your work. How do we get them out without opening the door? I think I could help with that. Uh, the vents, sir? Uh, doctor, um, we use those to get out of the compartment. Uh, Drake, can you see the ventilation shaft? Vent shafts? What is this, a Hollywood movie? I can see the vent, sir. We are wasting time. These civilians need moving. My friend is in there, along with members of the ship's company. They are not my priority. Soldiers, all you know is how to throw a gun in something's face and hope for the best. Why am I wasting my time with you, Charlie? Doctor? Due to a certain soldier's rash decision, somehow you're going to have to climb up into the vents. The monitor. Has, has it switched off? Lights, Doctor. No, 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 no. Charlie, Charlie! Visuals are back, Doctor. Charlie, is she okay? The lights are back, Doctor, but those angels, they've moved. And, wait... The civilians. They've disappeared. Taken. Taken? What do you... No. Don't look at me. Doctor, don't worry about me. I'm all right. The angel's only taken hold of my coat. Don't blink, Charlie. Uh, not to be the bearer of bad news, but uh, the angel's brought along a friend. Lex, with me. We're moving out. What? No, I'm staying here and helping the doctor. Are you disobeying an order? Uh, with all due respect, sir, most of our platoon's been taken. What's the point in playing soldiers anymore? Look, Lex, I know that you have a bit of a vendetta against these angels, but you cannot let your emotions cloud your judgment. Oh, no, see, that's just it, sir. That's the reason I'm helping the doctor. I'm not letting my emotions cloud my judgment. If anything, they're making me see things far more clear than you seem to be able to. I'll be having words of you later. Right, listen up. Follow me to the next rest zone. Doctor, where did they go? The people the angels took. Charlie, don't blink. Don't look away. Just do that, and you will be safe. Can you open the vent from here? Uh, I, I believe so. Uh, give me a minute. You're a good man, Lex. <laughs> I'll try my best, sir. Swiftness would be appreciated. Where did they take those people? No idea. They attack when the lights dim or uh, when you're not looking at them. Attack? As in kill? We haven't found any bodies. They just disappear. Drake, when you're in the vent, I'm going to try and direct you towards Alpha, alright? Okay, sir. And now we have the amazing task of trying to shimmy up a hole in the ceiling whilst not being able to look where we're going. Starting to struggle with the no blinking thing. You and me both. Ah! I'm alright. 
Don't worry about me. Just get into that vent. Not to sound rude, Miss Statue currently gripping my coat, but I'd rather this jacket didn't rip. I'm up. Brilliant. I, however, seem to have lost an angel. Just keep an eye on yours. I'm going to have to slip out of this jacket. Those statues have got a pretty good grip. I've never seen them do that before. Well, I'm guessing it's my lucky day. Are you free? Got my blazer off, if that's what you mean. Good. Just walk forwards a little. I'll reach down and pull you up. Righty-ho. Ah! Ah, cut me! It's grabbed my boot! Right. I have you. Why isn't it taking you away? What makes you different? I haven't a clue, but can you please pull me up? Quick, shut it. Drake. Drake, come in. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, yes. Is Charlie with you? I'm here, Doctor. I'm fine. Minus a blazer and a boot, but having that, I'm here. Uh, just to clarify, that had nothing to do with me. Oh, Drake, stop being distracted and concentrate, will you? Get a move on. We'll meet you in Alpha, and hopefully we don't run into any angels ourselves. Charlie, be careful. As I'll ever be. Here's to hoping no angels are crawling in these vents. Well, aren't you a cheerful chap? Right, off we crawl. I guess. Here we go. The last safe house. What? More people? This place can't hold many more people. These are all the civilians left, so there'll be no need for more space. Uh, excuse me, I need to update command. Been to command center? Been to command center. Anyone on the bridge? Do you read me? Do you read me? They got them, didn't they? They got the bridge too. Go to station 2964, they said. It's the future, they said. Who could have predicted this? There were 200 of us when we left. Now there's just a handful. The angels really have overrun us. This is it. This is where we all end. How did they arrive, the weeping angels? <laughs> is that what they're called? Never really had a name for them before. Um, in a shuttle. A shuttle which randomly showed up. Some of the crew were sent to investigate, and they reported back that the only thing on board were some statues. And we thought nothing of it. Next thing, all the lights went out, and the boarders disappeared. Taken from time, whipped off to a time before themselves, pocketed away where not even my TARDIS can penetrate. Your what? TARDIS? My space and time machine. In any other circumstances, I'd be able to rescue your friends, but the poison time period that the angels have sent them to will rip a hole in the universe. <laughs> you know, if you said that to me a couple of months ago, I wouldn't have believed you. But when your space stations are run by stone creatures, nothing surprises you anymore. I'm, uh, guessing you and Charlie aren't from around here then. Oh no! 1930s England! I was born in 1912. Wow. I wasn't expecting that as an answer. Wait, 1912? That would make you old. That would make you... Let's please not discuss ages. It's hardly polite. I was 18 when the Doctor saved me from an incident which has probably disappeared into the depths of history by now. Try me. Oh, have an interest in the classics, I see. Uh, I doubt it. The airship R101. Oh, yeah. I know that one. Not many people do. Wait, what was your name again? Charlotte Pollard. Did Lex say left at the T-junction? I believe so. After you. Why, thank you. What are you smirking at? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. You're checking out my rear, aren't you? Me? No. Never. Where's she, you one? 
<laughs> Tell me, how does someone from the 30th century know about the R1A1? Well, I had a member of family who was post tonight. Never made it through the flight, though. Wait. When you say never made it through the... Angels? Somehow, I don't think angels would have had the politeness of knocking. Doctor! Hello, Johnny. Come on. <sighs> Down you get. Mm. Lex, we need to gather all the remaining people on board and take them to the TARDIS. Abandon ship. These angels are like an infection. They feed on people's time. They won't stop till they've gotten everybody. Unless you're Charlie. How so? They wouldn't take her. They just grabbed me, Doctor. She's my lucky charm. No. Doctor, is this because... Not necessarily. Everyone else on board is in the only remaining safe zone, which is, um, uh, here. May I? Of course. Oh, you know things are bad when he gets his sonic screwdriver involved. A sonic what? Screwdriver. What are you doing? Life signs. See? All those purple dots are people, and if I... See? Show off. I'm over 900 years old, Charlie. I can't help but have certain skills. Well, I can fold a napkin into a swap. Which I'm sure is a skill that you will use eventually. So, if the people are purple dogs... Oh, the green are angels. So many of them. Spread over every deck. And surrounding the safe zone. Not surrounding. Look, they're moving into it. Not again. No, 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 no. We, we can't let this happen again. Doctor, we can't stand by and here and do nothing. Fen? Fen, Fen, Lex. are you reading me? The angels were breached. They got to the bridge too. Fen? I, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. No one's left. Lex, you need... Ow. Fen, I, I... I can't do this anymore. I, I really can't. I, They've taken everyone. Two hundred people. Only... Only two left. Drake. You're holding my hand. I'm sorry. It's okay. We'll help. We'll get out of this, Doctor. Right? Getting the TARDIS up on the monitor now. Ah, as expected. They've surrounded the TARDIS too. It's attracting them, the energy, it's, it's like a full course meal, a buffet to them. Doctor, what if we run? What if we leave the station empty? What, what if someone else boards? They're going to have their vessel infected too. Could we not put a quarantine in place? Even if you did, people would still come. Natural curiosity. Unless we destroy it. Blow this place up so no one can come. We are not sacrificing anyone else's lives. All of us. TARDIS. Now. All clear. No angels. They're swarming around the TARDIS. We're not on the menu yet. Always fun to be mentioned as a food substance. Come on, we still need to get to the TARDIS as soon as possible. Once we get aboard, we should be able to escape. Still don't think it's safe to leave this ship floating in space, full of those things. He's got a point, Doctor. We don't even know how the angels got here. Why if they escape? No one else is dying today. I've had enough of angels taking who and whatever they like. It stops now. All of us need to keep moving towards the TARDIS. Come on. Now. Oh, it's locked. Look, we can override the lock manually, but it's going to take a minute. Lex to the rescue once again. Yeah, happy to help. Doctor, don't you think they're right? Leaving this ship drifting through space. Are we really running? We never run. We're not running, Charlie. We're escaping. You never do that. We 
We never do that. They didn't take me. The angels, they left me behind. Perhaps I'm immune or something. Possibly, but there is every chance you just confused it by being from a different time, or because your clothes are from a different time than yourself, because or because you I... saved me from the R101. Possibly. But, 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 but we can't be certain. Why do you do that? Do what, Charlie? Try to completely avoid the subject. Doctor, you saved me from death. Saved you from death? Doctor, seriously, look, if the only way to stop the angels is to blow this place to kingdom come, then we can do it through the station's emergency warfare protocol. The what? Emergency warfare protocol, designed to prevent the enslavement or imminent destruction of the humans on board at the hands of a alien power, based on some kind of key thing that was an Earth defence in the 21st century? And all we need is to activate it as the most authority of the most senior command. Me. Focus on getting us back to the TARDIS. We will find a solution. Trust me. <laughs> Do you say so? Ah, doors open. As expected. Hello, ladies. Love the dresses. Are they available in a colour that's not grey? Charlie, do I have to keep repeating this don't look away rule? I'm all right. Sorry, Doctor. Doctor? Where's Lex? Oh, that stupid man. I told him no. So he'll be in the power room ready to blow us all. Which means we've probably only a few minutes to get away. Doctor, we need to stop him. <laughs> Drake, would you kindly move your hand off my rear? You've picked a bad time to cop a fill. I'm not. I've put something in your pocket, just in case. Just in case. Doctor, come on, what's the plan? When I say run, head to the TARDIS. What, the blue box? It's all right. It's bigger on the inside. Run! Doctor! They're shaking the TARDIS! How are they even doing that? Just hold on, Will. Let's get out of here. day travelling with the Doctor. You better get used to that, Drake. Drake? Um, sorry, Charlie. Why, Doctor? Why did they take all those people? Two hundred of them. And not me. Charlie. <laughs> I was wondering when you girls would show up. Well... This is it. This is where all this ends. You took everything from me. My friends, my wife, my, my daughter. And now you're gonna get your comeuppance. <laughs> Three, two. in case. Drake put this in my back pocket. Let me see. It's a photo. Doctor, it's Merchford. Simon Merchford. The boy whose place I took on the airship. There's writing on the back, too. Thank you for saving him. Without you, I wouldn't be here today. As soon as you mentioned the R101, I knew. I knew. Time travel must be fascinating. You're so lucky to have found a doctor. How I would have loved to see the universe with you. Much love, Corporal Drake Merchant. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, hello. I am Abby Louise and I play Charlie. Matt. Hello, I'm Matt and I play Drake. Hello, I'm Brandon and I play Lex and I also direct the station, the angels of station 2964. Yeah, that one. Yeah, How did you find just... directing? Do you know what? It was, it's been an experience. Uh, that sounds really bad. That makes me sound like I wanted it. I totally it's didn't. It's been I, an I, experience. I it does, doesn't it? It makes it sound awful. 
um no it, it, it has it's been an experience in a way that I, i've directed a lot of stuff on stage and i've done a lot of different i do a lot of things that are set in purgatory and i don't know why but it seems That's to be my niche random in it it's very random but i've directed like three things that are in purgatory uh, so that's really when you go okay um so bringing that to audio at first i was like okay we'll see how this works and it's amazing how interchangeable it is but it's also amazing what you start picking out for more so as 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 you guys who will have listened to this audio now will not know as whenever we started recording i would have turned around and said oh it's very roomy <laughs> that, that's my term of whenever uh, someone sounds like they're in a room, which is funny because they are in a room. Yeah, but if you sound room. like you're in a room, I'm like, I don't like it. <laughs> Fix it. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, you, you sort of, it, it's, I think a lot of it was hard, especially when you're trying to act at the same time while directing, because I'd be doing some scenes where I'd be acting in it, but I'd also be focusing on my directing mind going, oh, that line needs fixed there and that needs to change there. Um, so that was a little bit harder than I expected. But it's been a lot of fun. I feel I feel everyone's had a good time. Nobody's hated me for any directions I've given them. Nobody's turned around and gone, I don't care anymore. And they've hopped <laughs> off the train, um, which well, I thought might happen. Your face. <laughs> I, I, I'd expect so. I bet you a tenner someone has gone in the group chat or in the Zoom when I'm not there and gone, he's actually really pissing me off. He keeps oh, 100% not true. 100% like he not keeps true. telling me what to do. And I'm like, it's awful him being a director now. Um but yeah, especially uh, as we've just discussed tonight, as we filmed the filmed recorded the last of the, the last of the audio, uh, I like uh, going a bit mental now with stage directions because it gives a bit of fear and adventure into the actors. Uh, Matt, how have you found the whole experience? Um, well, considering I know I'm, I know what exactly what Abby's going to tell me when I say this, but considering I'm not an actor, don't just start. Uh, in the fair sense that I've never done anything like this other than the audio that James has done. That's the first one I've done. So this is this is all new to me kind of thing. I've never done like acting properly like mm-hmm. you, know, you or other people I know. So this is, um, yeah, it's weird doing it when you can't see people as well. So you've got to try and get that uh, emotion into certain scenes, especially with like when the angels are coming. Yeah. It's like you need to try and uh, terrify yourself of thinking of stupid things to get that quiver in your voice when you know there's an angel that's not actually there, but you have to make it sound like it's there, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I get See, this is one, I get this is one thing um, that I've enjoyed, because obviously I personally have done a couple of audio drama things now, but this is the first time we've kind of done it all together, and you get mm. so, you because you yeah. feed off of each other. So you, it's just, essentially you're doing a play. You're doing a live yeah. show. Well, that was one of the main reasons that I wanted to record it in the way that we have. So for anyone that doesn't know, anything that's usually been recorded, um, that we've done, it have been little audio segments or anything that we've done even for TikTok role play things, you know, we do it all separately and it's been recorded on someone on their own and it's been sent over. And it's one of the reasons I wanted to record using a different system so that we all had something to bounce off of so you weren't, guessing maybe that's how they'll say that line and i, I think that really helped mm. us all in a way it's just nice to be able to feed off of each other in it you know yeah especially yeah, very much so to... i mean how was it hearing your words for the first oh, time oh god i hate this script <laughs> Don't hate the script. If anyone listens to this, I hope you know the second one is Abby's favourite oh, script oh, so this far. Is, this is the thing. Well, this so, is your first one, isn't it? This is my first. I I was one of these kids that when I was like 13, 14, I'd write Doctor Who scripts, but nobody would see them. And I hadn't written anything uh-huh. until Angels. And it was purely because of all the other TT is like egging me on to do it. But I'm just, I, I enjoyed doing this. It was a brilliant experience, but I do feel like it's a step into it. I, I will admit, I much mm-hmm. the, ne- the audio that's coming out after this one, I personally much prefer. But as a first time script, it was weird <laughs> having like. Obviously, I'm assuming this this won't have a, the, the next audio won't have been announced online yet. So, is there is there anything you'd like to say about the next audio as a bit of a hint and well, a nod to that? Um, I I put a picture up of the script um today so oh, um, go looking so, for yeah, it. The, the the picture is up with the script it is called um werewolves of liverpool uh that'll be out next month 
but no, as it, it was, it was nice to have written something and for it to actually see in the light of day rather than been snuck in a drawer and <laughs> never read by anybody other than myself. You know, um, absolutely. And I, I think it's it's a strange thing feeling almost when you write something and suddenly people are speaking the words and you're going, I wrote that. That was me. I also, I also realised how rubbish I am at English as well. So this is, this is, this is, this is a steep, it's a steep learning <laughs> curve. Um, We've had some learning curves. I curve. think this is, the, this is the good thing about this. This is, this, because the whole recording together, Brandon directing an audio, me writing it. Um, myself, I've never played Charlotte Pollard either. This is, this is the first time playing good. Charlie. Mm. Um, really good. There's this woman called India Fisher who plays in the <laughs> She also likes to talk about people's food, served with red wine juice. Um, <laughs> no, I say this is very because obviously this is the first TT Productions audio drama. So, mm. can I say that any more like a thespian? Yeah, yeah, audio drama. <laughs> TT Audience Production audio drama. You know. And is there anything you both find weird going through the process? Do you know, it's, it's the cover in the acting again. It sounds really mm. stupid, but the vent scene. Oh, God, the vent the scene. The huffing and puffing <laughs> for the oh, vent yeah. scene. If anybody, I'm glad that I'm recording, as I'm recording this, my, my wife is away and my son is upstairs in bed, but if anybody would have walked in and listened to me huffing and puffing down a microphone, we'd wonder what on earth I was doing. I got so lightheaded. <laughs> like, oh, my God. I'm literally sat on a chair behind a duvet in my bedroom. Huffing and puffing, which out of context sounds amazing. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And not exactly. Context sounds like a great yeah, night. Huffing and puffing and trying to flirt whilst huffing and puffing, that's difficult. <laughs> I hope everyone's listened to the audio before they listen to the behind the do. <laughs> very, 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 what? He did what in the where? <laughs> How did you find um, playing Lex, Brandon? Because I feel like I feel like out um, of all the characters, he's the most wounded in a way. I feel he is. I feel like when he starts, I d- I remember. I think I got to the first like sort of half of the script with him, and I didn't really know who he was. Like you know, when you you have to create these characters in your head and who mm. you think you're going to play them as, and he doesn't really say a lot at the start for the first sort of halfish. He's sort of like he's helping out the doctor a little bit. And he's, he's, he's a tech guy and he knows what he's doing. But it, there's not really a lot to him then. And I think a lot of that, again, spoiler alert, I hope you've listened to this. I think a lot of that's down uh, to him, obviously, having lost his family by this point already. Um, so I just think he's very he's very mm. enclosed to himself. And I feel like it came, a, came across my performance because he he felt enclosed and didn't know who he was. And I didn't know who he was yet. It's that moment, uh, it's that moment with so like um, Ben, isn't it? When he... That's when it's like, oh, okay. Do you know what? That is yeah. exactly it. That's exactly the moment where I was like, I know who this is now. When he disobeys um, the order. Yeah. And later on, his anger that sort of comes out in his life, because there's that last scene before he does the thing. Um, and I feel like, you know, he, he's just pissed off with all of mm. them. He knows what he wants to go do. He knows what he's going to do. He's already set his mind on it. You all are just a waste of time in his eyes now. Um, he just wants to make sure you get off so he can go do it. And I feel like that anger, I, I feel felt myself, because obviously, like I say, you know, you try to keep that directing head on at the same time. But I felt myself being angry behind the mic while I was waiting for you all to finish your line so I could keep <laughs> that energy. Um, so that was that was interesting. He's, he's definitely, he's, a, he's an interesting character. And as far as I see it, he's a companion oh, that never no. was. And, I will um, say this, Brandon. Heartbroken. Uh, like, clapping hands for multitasking. Yeah. Literally, dude. Seriously, you are oh, no, thanks, but guys. you're brilliant at this, mate. Like, seriously, well done. Exactly. I, I, I second so that. Big want to hire it's... me. My number is so, 078. Oh. Um, Brandon is available. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon is available for everything. Well, I mean, I may need Brandon for something, so. So, um, I know. I'll I'm, I'm just, I'm just, yeah. I'm seven. just going to um, say at the end of this as well, because obviously. The, the one reason all of us met was because of TikTok. So if I could just get, get both of you to say your TikTok handles after this, because that's the whole premise of this group. So what is your TikTok handles, yeah. please, to end? Really? 
<laughs> so I wouldn't know which one's going first. Should I go first? Go first, Mark. Go first, Mark. <laughs> go first, Mark. Uh, right, so my TikTok handle is at Dr. Matt Who. And I am at Branzo, which is B-R-A-N-Z-Z-O-O, because I feel I have to explain that far too often. <laughs> and my handle is... Uh, why am I flipping... Stop at Abby. Right, I'm Abby now. Um, <laughs> and my handle is um, Abby of Trocken. So... I, yeah. Thank you very much for listening to Behind Thank the Doozy. I hope you enjoy.